What's up, everybody? It's Soren Baker here on Flood Magazine. We want to thank you guys for watching us and supporting us. And today we have the honor and the privilege of being joined by Mr. Marlon Kraft. Thank you for coming through, sir. What's going on, man? Thank you for having me. One thing that I was intrigued about is as your career was getting off the ground and as you had a few years in the game, uh, collaborating with uh, Master Ace and Marco Polo because Master Ace is, in my opinion, one of the best rappers of all time, and he's one of my favorites. So for Wannabe, how did that collaboration come about for you guys? Yeah, man. Um, so Marco Polo was the first guy who's kind of established in hip hop to ever really put his arm around me um, and reach out and, and offer me like mentorship and tutelage. And um, he's just a really great guy. Um, and so we were homies, we, we had worked on stuff and I would just go to his, his crib in, in Brooklyn and chill with him and his cat and make music. And, um, you know, he was doing the album with Ace and he's like, yo, I got a, we got a song on the, on the Ace album that might be good. We're looking for somebody younger to represent for the younger generation. Like, you know, would you, do you want to be on it? I really enjoyed it in the sense that both of you guys have a very introspective self-evaluation thing that you guys do that I think is uh, unusual or rare in a sense for a lot of rap, uh, especially more quote unquote modern rap per se. But for you, did you did you collaborate in the sense of getting in the studio with him? Well, you know, in the song, I take on this character. So, you know, it's not really me. I'm like rapping from the perspective of this angry, you know, like this young dude defending kind of like saying the other side of it. And there was no third verse on it yet. So when I sent it back, like, I was like, this is a really good idea, but I, I don't know Ace that well. I'd only met him once. And I was just like, I hope, you know, he does it, he does it. But I knew, I knew, you know, he, like you said, he has a depth to his artistry where I thought he would appreciate it. And Marco loved it right away. And he sent it to Ace and, and Ace liked it. And then um, I came to the studio the day that Ace did the third verse, which was like the response verse to the character in that I that I embodied. And uh, and it was dope. So I was like, yo, he he went off and he even used some of the flows that were like closer to what I was doing. Really, like I felt really proud that because that's how art and collaboration is beautiful to me is when like you do something that makes me want to do this and then that makes you want to elevate to do this that you weren't thinking of doing at first, but now you did it. So I was just hyped that we had an authentic collaborative experience in that way and we built off each other. Nice. So for you as a, as a writer, how and why did you want to play these different characters in your songs and, and show these different perspectives that aren't necessarily yours? It actually really just came to me. I was meditating on my balcony like a day before a day of going to work on the album and the format for the characters just popped into my head. And from there, I, I built out the song over like the next month. And yeah, I just wanted to make a statement about institutionalized racism in America and sort of the gang mentality that exists from the ground up, you know, throughout, you know, all of the different, you know, stratified groups sort of in our, in our country. So that's what I was trying to do there. Well, interesting in that regard is, you know, people often, or at least in my opinion, I see the inability to be able to humanize people that disagree with them or that break the law or whatever they don't agree with per se, or they have habits that they don't agree with. So for you, how, when, and why did you develop the empathy to be able to do that and then to project it in a way that's counter to your own thoughts? You know, it's not like I sit around and have like a tremendous amount of empathy for like crooked cops or, or Klansmen, you know what I mean? But, um, but, you know, they are human beings. And I've said, you know, I think that what one thing we gotta realize, especially like we being white people and especially like we being self-proclaimed progressive white people in America have to think about, you know, I think we have a lot more of them in us than we care to admit. And I don't think we allow ourselves to uh, go on that journey of like looking inward and that type of critical self-reflection so that we can move past some of that stuff. Um, so I just think, you know, it's important. So why do you think there's that, 
I guess, surface level talk of like, oh, we need to get rid of this or, oh, it needs to be dismantled. But then we, as a society, don't take significant or earnest or legitimate steps toward fixing it. Well, number one, because it's really deeply entrenched in our institutions, you know, like, like, uh, there are, I think people are confused about their power and, and the ways to exert it, you know, and I think that we, um, a lot of people feel that maybe authentically that power is their social media posts or demonstrating their awareness. You know, how much of that is a confusion over, how much of that is people's confusion over their their different forms of power and how much of it is just people's desire to perform um, for themselves and for others. And then the institutions, like I said, are, are just are just built in a way that there needs to be massive like undoings that a lot of big power and money, um, you know, stand stand in the way. So, I mean, that's kind of my artistic perspective into the hearts and minds of people. It was always gonna get worse for it got better Racism was never gonna go quietly to the night It never will, but I do believe that it along with greed Could make its way out of our institutions so that all are free one day I ain't say that it will, but today looks like today And both versions of the story so gonna grab you a quill It depends what we do, there's only one person The future starts and ends with it's you Also on State of the Union, you talk about choosing our own, who chooses their own thoughts and vices. You also mentioned that you meditate. So how, uh, what makes you believe that we don't have our own thoughts per se? And then what do you glean from your own meditation? Yeah, I mean, I think that we have a lot of things fed to us, you know, things that we think that we like and then things that we think that we authentically want. And, um, and the truth is that there's a lot of like, economic invest economically invested powers in making us feel and think a lot of the things that we do um and myself included you know what i mean i think it's like a constant battle when you exist in the context of capitalism and the popular culture that we have in our country in 2021 um everything is being sold to you on a constant basis um you know what i mean every every minute that second that you're on your phone something's being sold to you um and then we shape all of these things that we think are part of our own identity and part of ourselves or that we owe to ourselves to pursue um, that if we removed some layers, we'd realize that we didn't even really choose that for ourselves. And I think that I struggle with that a lot myself and meditation is a way that I try to, to combat that because I've had really bad anxiety my whole life. And um, so I've been like searching for, for ways to cope and deal with that for years and years. So. Um, meditation for me is a way to try to like get away from vice and try to get away from even even things that can get unhealthy at times like ambition uh, and just try to try to chill and try to appreciate just being kind of on a similar but different accord the grateful song i thought was interesting because it seems as though there and other times in some of your other material you've you know, and this is a rap thing too, that people are fueled by their detractors. So what what do you gain or draw from, from your detractors that leads to a song like Grateful or leads to you doing something different artistically? Yeah, that was just a turning point, you know, because I feel like this year, and that's a lot with this How We Intended album, you know, is kind of means to me. It's just, I thought in the past that I wanted certain opportunities you know, at a certain time or that maybe I deserve them or certain looks or, you know, and I was a competitive dude. I grew up in New York playing basketball and, and, you know, it's like a hip hop kid. And um, I was always frustrated a lot, really competitive, you know, and I got to this point where I just realized like, as things are starting to happen for me in my life and in my career, they're happening at the right time where I'm ready for them, where my skill set is ready for them, where I have a deeper appreciation for them. And so I just got to this point where I realized I'm grateful for it all. For everybody that fronted on me, that stunted on me, that run up on me, put love up on me, said I just want to say thank you. For what they said that I couldn't do, that I shouldn't do, that I wouldn't prove. I said, look at dude, said I wouldn't lose. I'm just grateful. And so 
everything that comes along, whether it's a challenge or whether it's a, a hand that gets lent. Ultimately, I'm grateful because it's all making me who I am and, and lending itself to part of my story. Um, and I have a, a deeper faith that things are gonna, gonna happen in the way that, that I'm gonna be able to deal with them. And then what's the kind of artistic objective then with how we intend? Man, so I mean, the, the grand one at large is I just want to touch people. I want people to feel moved. You know, I, I want people to, to, to feel moved in whatever way by, by, by this work. For myself, it's kind of like, it's about expression and it's about the communication of this idea that to myself and to the world that while the path and the journey is forever evolving and I don't know how it's gonna look and it's probably it, almost always gonna be nonlinear um, the intention that I have to be true to my art and the people that are moved by it, be true in my objective to just speak truth to myself and to the world, um, that intention is going to remain. And, and that intention is, is why I'm here. And that's what I'm here to do. And so this album is sort of a proclamation of that and, and, a, and, a, and a telling of a story of how I really arrived there this year. Well, thank you, Marlon. Appreciate it. Come See you in L.A. when when uh, when the world returns. <laughs> yes, let's do it. <laughs> All right, man. Later.